with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to dive straight into our next panel discussion, which is going to be chaired by Dr. Anurag Batra, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief, Exchange for Media Group. We also have illustrious panelists on this discussion. We have with us Roland Landers, President, All India Gaming Federation, Naman Jawar, Senior but- Vice President, Strategy and Operations, MPL, Ishan Arya, Co-Founder, the Esports Club, Philip Wong, Head of Marketing, Esports Players League, Dinesh Sharma, Business Head, Commercial PC and Smartphone System Business Group, ASUS India. They'll be talking about decoding the online gaming market in India. I'm sure you are going to be glued onto your screens. Let's welcome our panelists and moderator. A very warm welcome to all of you. Over to you, Dr. Patra. Ndikati, uh, good afternoon. It's a power pack panel. And next time we shouldn't do a power panel discussion. We should actually play games with the panelists. <laughs> I think this is very boring to do a discussion. Colin, what kind of a, a forum is this? We're talking about esports and we're not playing a game, but there's always a next time. Today we'll do a conversation about it, but maybe next time uh, we'll actually be experiential about it and actually play games. Uh, uh, and I mean it when I say it, you know, at the end of the, the, the real action is in gaming. Uh, talking not necessarily doesn't produce more gamers or more revenues, but uh, it is important to evangelize uh, this growing domain. Uh, domain, And we have today um, panelists who represent uh, this growing domain and they come from various stakeholder ecosystems. So let me uh, bring in Roland Landers, who's the president at the All India Gaming Federation, Ishan Arya, who's the co-founder and head of business of the, uh, he's founded a community of e-gamers. Uh, we have Dinesh Sharma, who rep- Presents, uh, you know, a manufacturer and owner of hardware uh, uh, for the digital economy, so to say. We have Navan Jawar, uh, who's the vice president of strategy at the MPL. I did a conversation with Sai two hours back, and uh, last but not the least, we have Philip Wong, uh, who's again uh, very active in the e-gaming space. Uh, only uh, Kathy, only. Problem we have, we have no women. We should have also women in gaming. We should do a separate session on women in gaming. But let me start by asking Roland. Roland, uh, it's a domain which is growing very fast. This one week has been very good for gaming as a business with the IP of Nazara. Clearly, if uh, you know there is interest in its uh, IPO, it is because of the growing nature of the domain and the fact that we are still underpenetrated in ends over the next few years. We are only likely to grow. So I would like you to start by making a few predictions about the future. Where is the gaming industry headed in India? And uh, what is the top two, three things that will happen to the gaming industry as we go forward? Hi, Anurag. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hi, Naman and my other panelists. Hi, Roman. Hi. So, uh, yeah, so we've already, you know, in a good place over the last three, four years, actually. The sector itself is not too old. It's only about 12 years old. I'm talking about the online uh, skill gaming uh, industry. and uh, But yeah, what we've seen over the last two, three, four years has been clearly phenomenal growth, really optimistic growth. And that's because of the you know, digital infrastructure and fundamentals uh, being in place. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, where we are looking at today, if I have to mention some numbers, that we just shared with uh, EY for the Ukraine report also, is that you know we are uh, currently at about 320 plus million gamers in the country, and uh, uh, and and this year the turnover for the sector will be in the excess of a billion dollars. So clearly, uh, you know, absolutely uh, bang on as far as the projections were concerned over the last uh, three four years. If I have to look into the uh, near future. Uh, this is going to grow, you know, next month uh, uh, onwards, there'll be the IPL again, uh, which we know, you know uh, is the reason for a huge uptick in the number of gamers and, you know, participation, especially in the uh, in the fantasy gaming uh, side format. So companies like MPL now look forward to, uh, you know, uh, a huge upside. Uh, as far as um, uh, as far as the, the, the business is concerned also, you know, this is going to grow in... in uh, in accordance with the last three, four years. So they'll be easily in the excess of 25, 30% growth for the overall skill gaming sector. 
obviously there are some challenges which i'm sure you'll bring up later but uh, you know we need we need uh, definite support uh, uh, the way it is structured is a little uh, uh, that is unwanted uh, as far as the country is concerned but i'm sure uh, that you know with our interactions at the age of with several stakeholders we are hopeful that you know that needed support will come okay roland uh, let me bring in uh, uh, naman first then bring in dinesh shan and philip uh, naman as a as a leading player uh, give us what you see happening in the future right right no so i think uh, you know industry is very very well placed right uh, you are seeing uh, on both sides right whether it is uh, developers or whether it is consumers or even uh, you know from the investing community you have already mentioned the likes of uh, you know uh, nazara going ipo so even the retail investors have shown a lot of confidence on the industry right so um, i think the the critical success factors for uh, scaling and growth is out there um, and uh, you know uh, i would see a lot of developments which are going to have happen on uh, multiple fronts right one of course um, i would see a lot lot more indian game developers kind of uh, making it big to the uh, you know to the um, overall global scenario right i think that's that's going to be definitely a mark shift uh, change right that's from the first side the second i would say is the scale of competitive tournaments is going to uh, really really go uh, high up right uh, we we would see uh, you know one of those years uh, which will be an inflection point for uh, uh, online skill gaming uh, both on the casual side and also on the pro side as well right so that's the second big uh, i would say you know uh, trend that that we can expect um the third is of course uh, you know in terms of uh, 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 you know uh, from a from a brand perspective as well right they, they, this this industry is going to create a lot more opportunity on the brand monetization side as well right uh, and that's that's something which is already happening whether it is live sports and Uh, or even like the uh, you know online gaming platforms, uh, but that's only going to kind of scale up as well. So I would say I think uh, these three really really look poised to be in in India. Uh, we do see you know um, uh, I've already mentioned about developers, but even the platform play uh, someone like MPL as well, and you know few of the other platforms that have also come uh, you know would start to kind of have a much more global play as well. So that's again uh, you know I think a fourth big trend that we can kind of see in the future. thank you naman for being specific uh, ishan um, again um, something that started as a hobby became into a, a full time profession and a community that grew give us a sense of what is uh, likely to happen in the near future i think uh, you know uh, we're moving towards a place where uh, you know esports competitive video games they're not looked down upon right they become very much part and parcel of uh, everyday entertainment and that's something that has been really boosted throughout this pandemic with more and more people looking for alternate means of entertainment and engagement uh, you know this digital medium has really filled that void and thrive and we've seen that with more and more people participating more and more people uh, watching events you know we we started off we're just about 18 months in uh, at the beginning of the pandemic we had about you know anywhere between 100 and 200000 views a month across our esports campaigns fast forward to you know feb 2021 we are crossing 1.5 to 2 million views every two and a half three weeks across our campaigns right so that's the kind of growth we've seen that's the kind of interest being generated here and now i think the main challenge is uh, you know to find a way to create a sustainable platform that gives these players reasons and incentives to keep coming back therefore creating value for advertisers sponsors investors fantastic and uh, you know one of the things is now uh, i've heard all three of you and the two more panelists i mean is that uh, it is growing there is legitimacy and clearly uh, these are early years uh, so these are the three things i'm hearing from all of you and uh, considering even fantasy gaming is becoming mainstream a uh, mainstream it was it was looked upon as betting uh, let let me say it as it is but uh, it is getting some kind of acceptance if i may use the word and that is also kind of spurring uh, uh, new user, users and let me give you two data points uh, one from investment uh, the stock market had 2 crore retail investors a, a year back the stock market has more than 4 crore retail investors 
So what has happened in 20 years has happened in 12 months. If you look at the overseas, uh, U.S. Uh, retail market, uh, the e-tailing was almost 16% of uh, the overall retail in the U.S., which is the most advanced uh, e-commerce market. That became 27%. So 20, uh, 16% in 20 years and 11% in 12 months. So clearly, uh, if these numbers are happening in e-tailing, they're happening in uh, the stock market, uh, the e-gaming domain cannot be far behind. So let me now bring Philippe and then bring in Dinesh. Philippe, uh, your opening comments, because uh, you look at India, but you look at uh, markets beyond India. So you have a view which is both uh, international and also understands uh, what's happening in India and Asia Pacific. Philippe? Thank you for the introduction, uh, Dr. Anurag. Um, and thank you all the panelists for having me. Um, I'm Philip Wong from uh, Esports Players League, ESPL, head of marketing here. Well, um, we're a, actually a global esports tournament platform that uh, provides across uh, multiple regions. So yes, we have experience with uh, multiple regions, but I think when it comes to the real money gaming, um, fantasy um, gaming uh, area, I think Roland would really be the expert on this area. But um, for ESPL in particular, we're focused on building that ecosystem. Ishan, um, he mentioned that as well. And through our platform, we actually provide that. Um, so for basically what we're aiming to do is uh, build and focus on the grassroots esports tournaments and build that, um, uh, that kind of platform for players to, who aspire to reach that esports dream. So, um, I think on that area, what we've seen, especially for um, in a global sense, um, here in India, the, the community is certainly very um, uh, yes. very competitive, very exciting. Um, but in Southeast Asia, what we've seen, for example, in some of the regions that we're in, um, the communities are a lot more mature depending on the game title, um, as well as the country as well. The competitive spirit here is strong, but um, I think it's good that there's talent development with uh, certain um, organizations like we've seen Team Mahi and Global Esports uh, nurture um, pro talent. But I think a bigger thing that is important is to have more tournaments and more competitions uh, for, for uh, teams. So I think um, we have seen how the play style and strategy of teams can skew to a specific direction. So we have observed that teams get um, used to competing against the same top teams again and again. So having regional and international tournaments helps expose teams to different competition. And we have seen things like that in Southeast Asia, where a lot of the tournaments are region wide. So an example of that is the HyperX Elite Cup, which we um, hosted and organized in Southeast Asia. And that brought over more than 1,500 over teams, right? And um, we do this by expanding to more regions. And here in India, we're working with uh, amazing partner, PFG Esports or Paytm First Games. And um, through that same vein of providing players with com competition beyond their own borders, our initiatives like our ESPR Amateur Championship. This is our yearly global tournament focused on providing amateur teams with a platform to broaden their experience and expose their esports teams to international audiences. So I think in that sense, um, building a lot of the bridges and allowing an opportunity for a lot of the teams to also play internationally is uh, an area that um, I see going forward for India as well. There's been great team and talent there, but yeah, um, that's what I see for India in comparison to global areas. Fantastic, Philip. Now let me bring in Dinesh. Dinesh, uh, thank you. Clearly, uh, India is growing at a pace uh, that we hadn't imagined, and we expected COVID to slow down um, our business and industries. But whether it comes to gaming, it's one of those sectors that has actually got accelerated. Give us uh, uh, a sense of what's happening in this sector through some data points and some trends that you have observed in your role. Sure, Anurag, thanks a lot uh, for this opportunity. So hi, everyone, and a big hi to all the co-panelists, including nice meeting Ishan again. Uh, so a couple of uh, key points, Anurag. We are uh, the largest uh, gaming brand in the world. 
uh, when it comes to ROG, which is a sub brand within the ASUS portfolio, which is called Republic of Gamers. Uh, so we are globally number one, both on PC side as well as smartphone side when it comes to gamers. And uh, in both PCs as well as smartphones, we are seeing a phenomenal growth uh, when it comes to gaming centric products. So, you know, when, uh, when you actually look at uh, products which are designed for gaming, they are pretty much different from your standard designed uh, products. We're clearly seeing a good growth out there. Uh, the factors which are driving the growth have been you know, like kind of highlighted by a couple of co-panelists already. Uh, one of the key, uh, you know, like uh, trends uh, that we are seeing is that, uh, you know, when the pandemic occurred, obviously, you know, you uh, wanted to connect with each other socially and gaming became a perfect platform to, you know, like kind of get together and virtually play with each other. So, uh, in fact, I would like to say that esports uh, is kind of trending in a manner uh, that it will become as big as cricket at a point of time because, uh, you know, when we were young, we used to, you know, like kind of go out and play cricket every day. What are the youth uh, doing today? You know, they are actually uh, playing an esport game uh, while they are free, while they are traveling. It's a great stress buster. Uh, so as more and more AAA plus titles are also further coming to uh, larger democratized product segments, which are like, let's say, smartphones, uh, apart from, you know, like having those AAA titles available on PC and consoles, uh, you are seeing a much faster penetration of uh, multiplayer gaming. And also one of the big changes uh, which happened in the Indian market is the availability of 4G at very, very economical prices uh, once Geo came into the play and it kind of democratized high-speed data networks. Uh, it led to huge growth in uh, you know, gaming and uh, one big trend shifter which is also further coming up is essentially 5G. So once 5G comes into the play and already you know, like the top-end gaming devices and flagships are obviously 5G enabled, uh, you will have further capability to give even better immersive experience uh, on smartphone gaming, okay, uh, than what is available even now. Uh, and uh, therefore, that will lead to further surge uh, in gaming adoption, gaming consumption, uh, the time that is being spent on gaming. In fact, all these stats, uh, KPIs, you know, if you were to look at it from an industry perspective, are actually on a very high uh, double digit growth phase as far as India is concerned. So therefore uh, you've got, uh, you know, like if you were to look at all the trends, they are pointing in a direction which indicates that gaming is here to grow quite big uh, when it comes to both smartphones as well as uh, when it comes to PCs. Uh, again, with some data points uh, on the smartphone side, uh, you know, we operate, uh, let's say in the top end of the market where we, uh, where our product sells at about 40K, 45K price points. Even at these price points, by being in a gaming-centric uh, product, which is ROG Phone, we've been able to grow this year uh, at a much bigger number as compared to last year. And again, this year, we are planning to grow much better than even... Uh, so let's say when I was comparing uh, this year, last year, I'm talking about, let's say, the financial year, okay? And then if you look at the next year, next financial year, let's say, which is between April to March again, we would again expect a very big growth rate out there as well. On the PCs front, uh, when it comes to gaming-centric PCs, again, on the ROG brand and the Tough brand, the two brands that we have, we've actually been growing with very, very high uh, double digits. And also, we are seeing the market expand at uh, the segment of gaming PCs in, in India, expand at a very high double-digit growth rate. So both on the PC side, as well as smartphone side, you're seeing a phenomenally high growth, uh, despite the fact that there were some changes which happened uh, recently in the past in the smartphone ecosystem with a major game title uh, going offline. Uh, uh, but despite that, the consumers just shifted and they adopted other available options. And still the, uh, I can say the indulgence and, uh, you know, the fact that they spend equal amount of time gaming that continues. It's just that the game changes, that's all. So that's what we've observed from us. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Now, let me start this time reverse. Let me start with Philippe. Philippe, uh, really, uh, you know, when we look at the esports market, we look at fantasy sports, we look at real money gaming, you look at all these segments. Clearly, inter international titles are very big. The Indian uh, game developer ecosystem is growing, and with the uh, interest in this sector, with the money flowing in this, most importantly, people getting passionate, you'll see more and more games coming out of India, hopefully, and dominating the market. And the beauty about the games is that they, you know, they are not language specific, you know. They are international, you know. Uh, so do you see Indian games? I want to ask you this question because 
and i wanted on a, do you see indian games becoming mainstream when it comes to global success i think it's certainly possible um and the talent is there certainly for sure um so we've seen multiple games um come out especially with the hype of esports um i myself when i was very really, really young that was the number one thing that i just told my parents every day esports is going to be huge esports could be huge and now it is right we're looking at 500 million over um audiences whether it's going to be just a casual game that's being developed in india or a an esports game specifically um there is a market for it we've seen um games for example in indonesia where we've uh, done tournaments for example a new title done by indonesian um um developers called lokapala for example and we've done a tournament for them before to kind of launch into that sec- sector so i think um you know there's the opportunity there and um well if if uh, developers want to try their hand at they got a esports title that they want to enter and and to try it out they can always speak to espl to have a look at that but <laughs> that's a very that's diplomatic answer philip uh, <laughs> clearly but uh, let me start by asking ishan this time ishan how do we make sure that uh, you talked about passion you talked about acceptability you talked about mainstreaming how do you make sure that the indian developer ecosystem produces titles that really go on to dominate in the world so that's how we will become a leader both in terms of as a sport and both in terms of a business and really it will plow back into the ecosystem to grow to the ecosystem what do you have to say to that um i think the most important thing here is to just note the distinction between the two types of games right um indian developers are you know very good at what they do there have been a lot of stand out titles of late raji uh, you know to name one in particular that has been received extremely well overseas right so th- there's definitely no shortage of uh, you know talent and capabilities however taking that next step to producing uh, a you know a full service game that needs to have a longer lifespan that needs to have constant content updates uh, that has that uh, you know crazy online multiplayer component to it that requires a whole bunch of different skills um, and capabilities which not a lot of developers i would say have that much experience in and not to mention it requires much more investment um, you know to to put up the servers and support for a game like that however you know in india being uh, a country where uh, you know the technology sector is growing at such a space we are one of the leading uh, you know hubs where people look for developmental support i i certainly see it as a possibility but it's not an easy road map to get there to compete with these uh, you know, polish titles it is yes. super competitive yes you know you need you need a lot of polish okay. you need a lot of features and you need a lot of constant support to really make it in that industry and field okay uh, uh, let me bring in dinesh roland and ishan into the conversation again first you roland uh, uh, roland how do we become a global phenomena uh, you know indian titles have started to do well uh how do we become a global phenomena in the overall arena yeah i am uh, not totally equipped to answer that but yeah i think uh, my co panelists ishan philip and even naman actually uh, you know there've been a lot of uh, mpl was started by you know game developers uh, and they're doing so well so really the uh, I, what i think at a very high level we all know that globally is that indians are very good in technology and creativity so you know if you combine the two obviously uh, i think it is quite possible to uh, what i have heard uh, you know at my role here is that uh, a lot of game development is now happening in india it's not just outsourced but these are you know indians working on globalized teams and they are uh, big studios who set up shop here uh, and i'm sure you know with that kind of uh, experience of co-working together there will be you know products some of the panelists mentioned about uh, you know certain uh, e-sport formats that are doing well i know of certain cricket games that are you know doing exceedingly well uh, so uh, i'm sure naman uh, you know will be better equipped to answer but that is my take uh, anurag uh, uh, on this this particular question you know naman uh, why don't you on, answer this and then we'll bring in uh, dinesh to give his perspective right right no i think see uh, let's let's look at it in terms of you know uh, 
uh, why why we are now kind of you know well placed as well right i mean earlier the dominant models around monetization uh, purely were you know kind of i think uh, predominantly reliant on uh, ad monetization or, or to a certain extent in app purchases right uh, which then made sense for you know creating games um, you know largely that can that can kind of you know uh, make the survival if i can call it for the for the developers right and that is that is now kind of changing right uh, uh, our panelists talked about esports uh, you know uh, there's of course like uh, competitive gaming uh, on a real money gaming skill based gaming as well right which has again come as a uh, again a, a new monetization model right and that has definitely kind of enabled developers to to think about scale uh, now when you have that kind of scale in terms of monetization you can you can think about you know uh, that scale development as well right because uh, the 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 talent is out there right you you have the right uh, art uh, uh, you know talent you have the right game design talent you have the right product management talent uh, to be out there right uh, what was needed was the right uh, impetus in terms of investment uh, a right distribution model and also right monetization model right which uh, with the coming of uh, of platforms like mpl um, you know we we've, uh, we've created that ecosystem that can enable these developers to think big um and i think that's that's markedly uh, you know one of the biggest change that uh, the industry has seen what else would actually also enable this uh, uh, you know there's a lot of uh, while while we see bunch of uh, stakeholders giving it legitimacy i think there are uh, there is also pockets of uh, you know perception uh, that is not really kind of working in the favor of the industry right which which again kind of impacts you know um, uh, the developer itself at the end of the day right because Uh, they were talking about an industry that uh, you know it has it has clarity in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, policy in terms of uh, certain regulations and you're talking about uh, job creation you're talking about you know uh, indian developers making a mark globally um, but that also is critical you know in the home turf uh, to make sure that you know the sunrise industry does see scale not just in india but also globally okay uh, um dinesh your point of view on how to get india to dominate and have a large part and grow this ecosystem in india see even firstly, much more than what it has grown now sure no see firstly uh, you know like from if you look at the top uh, at least on the smartphone side uh, if you look at the top e-sport gaming titles in the world okay india is a prime market for them uh, because in terms of installed base of customers whether you look at the monthly active numbers or let's say you know like installed base of Uh, customers from india on these games uh, they are running in excess of 100 million uh, consumers so let's say if you know like uh, as rodan really spoke about the fact that there are about 320 million gamers in india who would be playing any kind of a game on a smartphone if you were to look at the big titles uh, they had installed base of let's say upwards of 70 80 million for sure and if you were to look at the top three titles and you were to look at the combined installed base in india it would actually exceed 100 million and these these games i'm that i'm talking about the very immersive games Uh, which are apps for esports of course india uh, indians typically you know like prefer the first player shooter format and we've seen that format really do exceedingly well uh, when it comes to adoption of games so from an ecosystem perspective indian developers are very close uh, to the indian consumers in terms of understanding their need and they have a very large domestic market uh, readily available to them uh, comprising of more than 100 million Uh, you know quite serious gamers and if you look at the monthly active base also of very serious gamers uh, they would typically exceed a number of 35 to 40 million in india now this is a very healthy uh, established ecosystem available uh, for indian game developers uh, to capitalize upon uh, because they can understand the need better being local and try and see how they can actually innovate and come up with uh, great uh, phenomenal game uh, games which might appeal to this audience and the other good part is that uh, if they are able to appeal to this audience there is a very large global audience which is look alike you know in marketing terms if i were to call it and this look alike audience would also you know like kind of adopt uh, you know what these indian gamers are adopting because indian gamers are pretty much adopted international titles for reasons well covered by our other co panelists before in terms of the kind of tech and investment that is required to create so for uh, indian developers this is a great opportunity uh, that they can leverage Uh, the good part for them is that 4G is very well established out there. 5G is coming up. Uh, the device ecosystem, you know, which is required for supporting 
uh, good quality of games is also accelerating in terms of penetration very very fast and we have a large base of uh, you know high performance smartphones and pcs available to them to capitalize upon so there is huge opportunity uh, which indian developers should make use of uh, from our perspective also we had let's say for example partnership with unity which is one of the game dev- uh, gaming engines uh, okay uh, for our products to give additional capabilities on our products now when we were working with unity india was also one of the key focus markets for us to do developer meets and uh, we were doing that which means there is already a strong base of and focus uh, by even uh, gaming engines for the indian market so i think uh, the indian developers have a very good fertile home ground uh, that they should capitalize upon and uh, make use of this opportunity thank you now let me bring in roland roland one of the things is policy risk uh, how do you bring policy consistency to this industry because the more policy consistency you bring in the more investments it will attract it will attract legitimate big players apart from entrepreneurial young player to really create this who have created this domain so how do you make sure you bring policy certainty and in what areas and the uh, other question is about creating content in indian languages which can bring a new set of users as as you unlock uh, the value of uh, indian language gaming content uh, that can, possibly can bring in the next 100 million 200 million users so on these two i would like your comments probably yeah so we'll take the policy uh, thing first uh, obviously at the edge we've been at it for the last 5 years uh, and you know uh, gaming uh, is a state subject uh, however the business is entirely digital and online and hence there are uh, you know issues uh, definitely uh, all the uh, stakeholders uh, barring policy obviously and, and mind you the industry is self regulated like uh, we do at the edge for the for the sector uh, the thing is that despite that it has grown you know such uh, humongous levels obviously it's a, a new sector it's a sunrise sector and that is why Uh, like you know ott before us or even media entertainment before us uh, television broadcasting have been uh, self regulated for the longest time uh, but, but ob- obviously you know we've been approached by uh, a lot of uh, central ministries we worked uh, you know consultative manner with them and uh, they are very eager to support uh, the industry because you know it has demonstrated in the last few four years that here's a sector that can really you know add value in terms of you know job creation in terms of uh the taxation to the extract and things like that now it you know but but the fact of the matter is it's a state subject and then uh, you know different states interpret uh, online skill gaming differently and that's where the issue is obviously as part of our mandate we work with several states it's work in progress we continue to do that and uh, you know uh, most of the time it is a lack of understanding of the sector itself uh, india is uniquely positioned in that way because uh you know in other countries they don't have this uh, differentiation between uh, games of scale and otherwise and, and that is why uh, you know uh, things are a little uh, things get blurred and that's why as you began saying in the beginning uh, that you know fantasy sports was uh, equated with something but uh, that's the reason why now uh, i think uh, you know from the other stakeholder communities like where be it investors be it uh, uh, you know uh, gamers uh, who are adopting uh, gaming practices all of that there's been absolutely no problem at all uh, number of gamers growing year on year the, the i'm uh, you know recently we did a report uh, with uh, maple capital advisors and uh, there's been in the excess of 400 million uh, worth of you know mna that has happened in the sector over the last 3 uh, to 4 years so absolutely no problem you know confidence from the investor community it's just that uh you know uh, definitely we need to look at some national uh, you know policy and we are working in that direction which can mitigate this problem that comes from different uh, interpretations from various states that i think is the answer to the first uh, question the second one uh, uh the second one obviously you began by saying you know gaming is agnostic language agnostic i believe that and uh, hence uh, yes that is true but that is more in terms of uh, you know um, a certain kind of audience but beyond a certain kind of audience we need to bring in a larger audience than possibly possibly so yeah so anurag how it is that you know obviously when you're looking at you know content or you know content around gaming then obviously i think that you know when you get into the regional languages and all there's a huge uh, you know audience that can be brought into uh, gaming definitely they can be but really you know where we uh, you know focus our interest on 
or in the uh, subscription led or transactional side of gaming and there i believe you know because it is not uh, looking at uh, uh, you know uh, advertising as a source of revenue and creating content around it i think uh, this form of transactional gaming is really a language agnostic and you know it is shown demonstrated that year on year there's been a healthy double digit growth in you know in the uh, number of gamer uptake fantastic now our conference is called game on keep the game on for the next 2 3 years and take it the game to a next level i would want to get a closing comment from each one of you on what is that one thing you are doing in your area of influence in a, in what you are doing to make sure that the gaming pie grows so let me start with philip first and go around the house philip sure thank you um well for espl i think it's a matter of thinking global but uh, going local um so what we do at at the end of the day is we work with country partners we've got a franchise model with our platform that's easily um sent throughout our regions that we're in we're in latin america south asia southeast asia mina we're in um in scandinavia as well and i think uh, what what we're doing at the moment is through our platform um connecting with multiple country partners who already have an existing community for example here in india we have ktm first games has amazing large community of gamers who are looking to play esports games in particular as well and engaging with them and connecting them with our larger larger audience that we are um present in in the the multiple regions that we're in so what we're doing is connecting um players across the world through our platform and giving them that zero to hero um journey through our platform hopefully thank you philip for making the game global and believing in the power of partnerships ishan what are you doing to be able to grow this sector not just um, your own sphere of influence yeah. but uh, in some way contributing to the growth of the overall sector the yeah. um so i think the main objective here is to continue to provide opportunities right because if you look at sports uh, there are leagues that run throughout the year there are different levels of competition that players can sort of work their way through as they grow older right you you've got your school levels your local levels district state uh, then your amateur leagues your semi pro leagues and then you know you get picked up by one of the lower divisions and then you make your way up uh, to the likes of the ISL uh so that's what we want to try and create for esports by providing that platform by providing that opportunity at several tiers what this does is not only give them that recurring opportunity to own their skills and to improve but also to try and create a sustainable uh, job out of it right somebody competing at an amateur or a semi pro tier they don't have to worry about competing with the best teams who are competing for a separate prize pool altogether you Absolutely. look at most organizers most events it's just one jumble of teams it's a free for all the best comes uh, and you know you can probably pick out the names from on just one hand who's going to walk away with 95% of the money right we are trying to change that entire approach change that ecosystem to ensure at every level of competition there is enough incentive for players so that once there are more players there is more interest there are more fans there are more viewers and that creates more value for your sponsors advertisers and investors and you know ishan with the possibility i mean esports have already been included in asian games there is a very very real chance very soon that they may be part of next year's olympic games uh, and if that happens then clearly the competitive there's nothing more enthralling and engaging than watching a competitive sport uh and e gaming has is possibly made for a screen whether a television screen or a mobile screen on an ipad you know uh the format of the that of the game is such that it it attracts audiences it is accelerating to be part of it by watching it and commenting on it so clearly that acceleration may take it to the next level uh dinesh uh and naman your final comments yeah dinesh so first. yeah sure thanks Uh, so first of all you know as a company we give the best and the most ultimate weapons to the gamers so whether it be you know like smartphones or uh, pcs we give you the most ultimate weapon. but apart from that when it comes to building up the esport community uh, we are taking two major measures one uh, you know we run this uh, tournament called battle of gods which is you know for rog users and every weekend you know we have an esport tournament for rog phone users 
uh, which they can participate in. And we have a prize pool of 50,000 rupees plus for them, uh, which they can win. And we've successfully conducted now already two leagues on Battle of Gods 1 and Battle of Gods 2 on the ROG phone. Uh, plus, we've got similar kind of tournaments on the PC side. We've also started on the PC side an ROG Academy, uh, you know, to train uh, gamers, uh, you know, who are really keen to become esports players uh, uh, on esports and make them capable uh, to participate in the esport tournament. Given the clarity on PC already, on PC ROG Academy has uh, started working with the teams that are being trained to become esports players. And on the smartphone side, we are, you know, we're kind of waiting for, to see, you know, like how the ecosystem now moves forward, on which uh, uh, you know, let's say the game platform will become the mainstream esport game, and then we would like to initiate this even for uh, smartphones. So we are working on uh, upskilling, we are working on training of uh, gamers, we are uh, working on giving them the best equipment in the country and the best support uh, to kind of embrace uh, high quality esports and have, you know, the best possible teams in the world uh, and win global tournaments from India. We also partner very closely with uh, the big gamers in India and we take a lot of their input in terms of what we should do in terms of further product development. So uh, you will see us working, you'll see us actually working with the top gamers on the smartphone ecosystem as well as the PC ecosystem, as well as a lot of tech gurus, uh, you know, who kind of work on product reviews, et cetera, take their inputs to create the best gaming products even going forward. So this is a nutshell you know, what we are doing. Great. Uh, Naman, your final comments. Sure. So, so two customers for MPL, I think a lot of focus is to kind of enable, uh, you know, both of them to scale. Uh, one, of course, is on the developer side. So uh, working a lot with a uh, bunch of Indian studios uh, and Indian developer ecosystem to kind of help them scale and scale at, uh, you know, with uh, better and faster monetization, right? So that's that's one part of the focus area that MPL focuses on to really, really develop the uh, developer okay. community. The second on the user side, I think what we've actively also taken is, um, you know, a fair bit of focus on responsible gaming. Uh, we do understand the risks that are associated with the uh, with the uh, you know uh, uh, the industry, and we want this to kind of you know uh, grow and grow sustainably. So I think that's again a big charter that MPL has taken and, and has, a, has a clear focus in the next two three years to, to promote responsible gaming. And on the third side is um, really to you know kind of break the myths, right? Uh, we just went live with uh, one of our um, sort of sensitization campaign, if I can call it. Uh, 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 with Hander Pace, uh, wherein he won one of the Olympic medals uh, back in 96, and we have an Asian Games that is coming up in 22. Um, and, and the idea there is that, look, I think the medals can be won in, in both fields, whether it is live sports all, or, uh, uh, you know, sort of virtual sports. And, and then this time, yeah, let's, I mean, uh, so it, it goes by the tagline called, you know, uh, uh, right? and, and that's the spirit that we want to kind of embrace and, uh, uh, you know, promote this industry. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we are talking to the pioneers of the gaming industry, uh, catalysts who are making this sector uh, vibrant uh, and making it mainstream and making it uh, exciting both for players, for audiences, for investors, for marketers, for all the stakeholders. So let me congratulate them and say the game is truly on. Uh, we're delighted that you could join the Exchange for Media gaming conference today. And while we are doing this virtually, uh, hopefully next time around we'll uh, we'll do it in hybrid, a physical and a online model. Hybrid is a word that gets used a lot. I'm sure it'll get used in gaming too uh, when it comes to large format game tournament. And clearly, uh, the beauty about technology and digital is it helps you to scale up without geographical restrictions. And gaming has been a big a beneficiary of COVID because the digital acceleration has really helped people get onto gaming and pursue their passion of gaming and the extra time available to them. For some of them, it's gone into gaming. So clearly the game is on. Uh, congratulations, Roland, for doing the work you've done for this sector over the last uh, four and a half, five years. And I'm sure uh, the work you've done in the last few years uh, will manifest itself in the coming year. So I wish you luck. And I look forward to uh, next time playing a game on our show with you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And back to you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.